This is a Tiny Whoop, a micro FPV drone that is super fun to fly. It is really durable and people love them because you can freestyle and race with them. However, they have a couple big problems. One of them being the small LiPo batteries that come with them only provide two to five minutes of flight. That's just not enough. And when you're ready to go outdoors, these little Tiny Whoops get blown around in the wind. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to modify your Tiny Whoop to use this battery, a lithium ion cell to get way longer flight times and better wind resistance. Some of you may be thinking that a lithium ion cell is not gonna work very well with a Tiny Whoop. Well, you're partially correct. An 18650 weighs about three and a half times more than the LiPo, and Tiny Whoops just aren't designed for that much weight. You can simply just strap this battery to a Tiny Whoop and it will fly. But, it flies horribly and is way underpowered. With the LiPo, it's way more zippy. Here's full throttle on the LiPo, but my flight time was only three minutes. Here's full throttle with the lithium ion, much slower. It doesn't fly well, but it flew for over 10 minutes. And that is why we need to do some modifications to make this battery fly more like this battery. The only tools you'll need are probably a Phillips and a hex. You may need some hardware and then possibly a soldering iron as well. Now we're going to take our Tiny Whoop and add a new frame to it. This is the Beta FPV Twiglet 2.5 inch frame. It is super lightweight, pretty durable and it's gonna give us a little bit wider stance to help us carry that extra weight. One of the best parts is this guy only costs about $4 off of AliExpress, but before you switch all of the electronics onto this frame, let's talk motors. So a lot of 75 millimeter Tiny Whoops come with 0802 motors. Now these are just too small to efficiently carry a lithium ion battery. I found that 1102 motors are about as small as you can go and still carry an 18650 effectively. So if you have a Tiny Whoop like the Meteor 75 Pro that comes stock with these 1102 motors, you're in luck, you won't need to switch anything out. If you have a smaller Tiny Whoop like a normal 75 millimeter or even a 65 millimeter Tiny Whoop, you're still in luck because I have found these generic 15,000 kV 1103 motors that perform very similarly to the 1102. And the kick is on AliExpress, these cost $3.75 a piece. That's insane. So it just costs $15 for a pair of four of these and you'll just switch them over. Lastly, you'll just need to upgrade to 51 millimeter props. This larger motor paired with the longer props will give us a ton more lift. I designed these 3D printable battery holders for the 18650. They've been really durable and they have this nice skid plate to protect the battery. Simply just slides in and it'll mount right into the frame. If you don't have a 3D printer, I wanna make these really affordable on my online store in the future, but that is not set up yet. However, on AliExpress, you can buy these 2S LiPo battery holders and it will squeeze an 18650 into it, but it is a little bit tight and it doesn't have that extra protection. Most Tiny Whoops use 1.2 or 1.4 millimeter screws to mount the flight controller into the frame. We're gonna be using two millimeter. As you can see here, there's not that much. I use metal and plastic bolts. You could just use metal bolts, but you can't use just plastic bolts because the bolts going into the Battery holder here need to be metal. The plastic ones are too weak. But really, it doesn't save that much weight, so if you wanna do all metal, that would be a great way to save on costs. These are 1.4 millimeter motor mount screws. I switched them straight from my Tiny Whoop onto this frame. These bolt kits are pretty inexpensive, and I'll link a couple down below that you can look at. You're gonna need a lithium ion cell. You're gonna want one with a high discharge rating, just meaning it can put out a lot of power and that is gonna help us with the extra weight. An easy rule of thumb for decent flight performance is at least 20 amps of discharge rate. The higher, the better. This Eve 33V only has a 10 amp output, so it wouldn't be too good. 
Here are three different cells that I recommend. The Sony VTC5D comes in at 25 amps discharge rating, Molly Cell at 35 amps, Amp Ace at 36 amps. The Sony flies pretty good, but the Molly Cell and the Amp Ace are definitely a little bit better. I'll link a couple good sources on where you can get these cells. There are two methods to adding plugs to these cells. Method one would be soldering directly to the terminals. Method two being spot welding a tab and then soldering onto the tab and adding your plug onto the end. Soldering directly to the cell adds too much heat to the terminals, which can damage the battery and worst case scenario, start a fire. This method is not recommended by the manufacturer, so do so at your own risk. It's recommended to spot weld tabs onto the ends and then you can solder to the tabs to add the plugs. There are plenty of tutorial videos out there. Just make sure to do your research because these batteries are the real deal. For those of you not ready to buy the spot welder to do the research or to take upon yourself the liability to build a battery, I'm working hard to make this publicly available. A huge thanks to everyone watching and supporting my channel. It's allowed me to get started. I've purchased a professional grade spot welder, a ton of cells. I'm super passionate about this power source for quadcopters and I'm super excited to make this more available. Stay tuned for when I release this in the near future. Time to remove all the electronics and transfer it to the new frame. You may need to use 22 gauge wire to extend the wires like I did. Make sure to use the metal bolts for the battery holder. Now secure it with the nut. Make sure the holder is tight, we don't want it wobbling around. Slide the flight controller and canopy on top and secure it with another nut. Repeat this process for the back. I did need a hand drill bit set which just costs a couple dollars and use the 2mm piece to drill out the back of the canopy. I secured the sides with the plastic bolts and nuts. You'll probably want to switch to an XT30 plug because this build draws over 15 amps. And here is the beauty. The motor is face downwards because it more efficiently pulls air past the arms rather than pushing it against the arms. My testing showed it was about 10% more efficient to do it this way. There's just enough clearance for the battery. Here's a quick size comparison. And here's the bounce test. Wow, way better. It is really surprising how similar it is to the LiPo. Here's a full throttle comparison. Again, very similar to the LiPo, just a lot more float with that extra weight, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. The first thing I wanna say about this is it's not a tiny whoop anymore. It's bigger, heavier, doesn't have the prop guards, definitely not gonna fly indoors, and it handles a whole lot different. It feels like a much bigger quad than it is due to the weight of the battery, which actually makes it super fun. I'm talking about how you feel the weight, not necessarily in a bad way, but where you turn and then you drift around the corner rather than a tiny whoop, which reacts immediately. It's the same as the float I was talking about where you give it full throttle and for a couple seconds, it just keeps going up. I was really surprised flying the tiny whoop and this back to back. The power levels seem very similar. One of the big differences being on how easy it is to recover. With just a little bit of throttle, a tiny whip can stop its momentum completely, while this, on the other hand, you might just crash into the ground. As far as freestyle ability goes, tiny whoops are crazy what people can do with them. I'm really curious what someone could do with this machine that's better than me at flying. The biggest downside to this setup has to be the power levels as your voltage goes down. When you start at 4.1, 4.2 volts, you have tons of power, but once you get closer to the end of the battery, which you can fly all the way down to 2.5 volts, um, it starts to feel pretty weak. Once you hit about 3.2, 3.1, or get under 3 volts, you really begin to start feeling it. A LiPo, on the other hand, you do feel your power level go down a little bit, but not nearly as much as a lithium ion. With all that being said, I am still so impressed with this little machine. If you just strap a lithium ion cell to a tiny whoop, it hovers at about 60% throttle, is super sluggish, and flies for about 10 minutes. This on the other hand is pretty lively and fun to fly. It hovers at 40% throttle, and I've gone up to 25 minutes of flight time in warmer weather. Today I got a little over 15 minutes. That's 5 times better than the LiPo in the same conditions. Here's another full throttle at lower voltage to show you what I mean. 
Definitely slower, but it still goes strong until about 2.75 volts. This conversion has some pros and cons, but I think it's really fun to try. And if you don't like it, you could always switch it back.